Chlorine is an essential ingredient in the manufacture of an enormous number of consumer products, industrial materials, and water purification supplies, and is involved in almost half the United States gross national product. The same characteristics of chlorine that make it so useful also make it a highly hazardous material if it is released into the atmosphere. During the next few minutes, I will give an overview of first aid and medical assistance directions for helping people who have had an acute exposure to chlorine gas. This video does not address exposure to liquid chlorine by direct contact, as this is highly unlikely, except to a person in the immediate area of the point of release. Liquid chlorine rapidly vaporizes, and its effects are the same as chlorine in gas form, except that direct contact with liquid chlorine can also cause serious thermal and chemical burns. The information in this video is a summary of the Chlorine Institute's pamphlet 63, which is entitled First Aid, Medical Management, Surveillance and Occupational Hygiene Monitoring Practices for Chlorine. You should refer to this pamphlet for additional information. In addition, all suppliers of chlorine are required to supply a Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, for chlorine. The MSDS for chlorine can be readily obtained from chlorine manufacturers, suppliers, the library, or the internet. As a first responder, you should read and understand the contents of the MSDS and consider it an important reference document. Employers who make or use chlorine must train their employees to understand the information provided by the MSDS and product label and how to use the information to protect themselves. When you are called to respond to assist people who have been exposed to chlorine gas, your first responsibility is to ensure your own safety, the safety of other first responders and others in the contaminated area. Remember the first rule of emergency response is to protect yourself from exposure. You can't come to the aid of someone else if you become adversely affected by the exposure. When dealing with a possible chlorine emergency, it is important to remember that chlorine gas is primarily a respiratory irritant. Chlorine can be detected by smell at very low concentrations and has a familiar odor like household bleach. As the concentrations increase from the level of detection by smell, so do the symptoms in exposed individuals. The toxic effects of chlorine are due to its corrosive properties. Exposure to chlorine gas at low concentrations may cause irritation of the nose, the mucous membranes of the respiratory tract, and eyes. For example, at chlorine concentrations above five parts per million, the gas is very irritating. It is unlikely that any person would willingly remain in such an environment for more than a very brief time. As concentrations increase, so does irritation, resulting in coughing, sneezing, salivating, and eventually difficulty breathing. As the duration of exposure or the concentration increases, fluid enters the breathing spaces causing symptoms of rapid breathing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and the accompanying medical signs of rapid respirations, upper airway and lower airway breath sounds from the increased fluid. In severe cases, blood will enter the fluid and be visible as pink or bloody sputum. Extreme cases of chlorine exposure can be fatal. If the symptoms persist for more than a few hours, exposed individuals should be placed under medical observation. It is important to realize that the effects of exposure to chlorine may become more severe for several days after the incident. As a first responder, you may have already concluded that first aid is a critical first step when someone has been exposed to chlorine gas. Prompt action is essential. First, move any exposed individuals away from contaminated areas as quickly as possible. As in most first aid cases, taking the time to reassure the individual can help to alleviate their anxiety. And of course, get medical help as soon as possible. If the individual's skin or clothing has become saturated with liquid chlorine, take immediate steps to decontaminate the person by removing the affected clothing and showering as recommended on the MSDS. In keeping with standard first aid procedures, you should evaluate anyone that has been exposed to chlorine for an adequate airway, breathing and circulation after the inhalation. If the person is not breathing, immediately administer CPR and continue it until professional medical assistance arrives. If the person is breathing, help them to a comfortable position. If possible, they should sit upright 
with the head and trunk elevated 45 to 60 degrees, but only without causing further harm. Encourage slow, deep breathing, and if equipment and trained personnel are available, monitor the person's vital signs, the respiratory rate, pulse, and blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. Humidified oxygen is the primary treatment for chlorine inhalation, since the humidity soothes the irritation to the mucous membranes caused by the chlorine. However, if humidified oxygen is not available, oxygen without humidity should be given if oxygen therapy is indicated. If the person's eyes have been irritated due to exposure to chlorine, flush them immediately with generous amounts of lukewarm water for at least 15 minutes. Hold the eyelids apart during this period to ensure the water has contact with all accessible tissue of the eyes and lids. Get professional medical help as soon as possible. Continue flushing the eyes for at least 15 more minutes or until medical help arrives. So far, I've been discussing first aid response for exposure to chlorine gas. Now I'm going to briefly review the seven general principles for the medical management of chlorine exposure following the initial first aid treatment. First, anyone who has developed symptoms as a result of an acute overexposure to chlorine gas by inhalation should be placed under the supervision of qualified medical professionals. Second, remember that there is no known specific antidote for acute chlorine exposure. A prompt medical assessment and supportive measures are necessary to obtain good therapeutic results. Third, if the individual is unconscious, be sure to protect the airway from obstruction. Fourth, you can alleviate anxiety by telling the patient what you are doing to try to help them in gaining his or her cooperation, especially with breathing exercises. Fifth, people who have been exposed to chlorine and are breathing and conscious should be positioned with their heads and trunks elevated to a 45 to 60 degree position. Again, only if it is possible to do so without causing further harm. Sixth, you should encourage a slow and regular breathing. And finally, consider oxygen therapy for anyone who continues to be symptomatic after inhaling chlorine. Most people exposed to chlorine fully recover after medical treatment within a few hours or days. The recovery period depends on the amount of exposure and the general health of the person. After an acute exposure to chlorine, pulmonary function usually returns to pre-exposure levels within one to two weeks and complete recovery usually occurs. However, people who have been exposed to chlorine should be monitored for delayed effects, such as pulmonary edema, which is the accumulation of fluid in the lungs. And since physical exercise appears to have some relation with the incidence of delayed reaction, anyone who has had severe inhalation exposure should be kept at rest for the period of observation. The length of observation will depend on the clinical assessment of the person, but observation may be required for several days. Being prepared and knowing what to do is vital if someone is exposed to chlorine gas. The points I've raised with you today are an overview, not a comprehensive summary, of all possible health information or the treatment guide to a specific case. For more detailed information, please refer to the Chlorine Institute's pamphlet 63 titled First Aid, Medical Management, Surveillance and Occupational Hygiene Monitoring Practices for Chlorine.